Hey everyone, I'm Todd from DAV's communications team. And I'm Mary from DAV's communications team. We wanted to talk to you a little bit today about outreach in your communities and social networking and how to spread DAV's messages no matter where you are. All right, cool. So I want to talk to you about three things today, actually. One of them, why we talk to media, what makes a good story, and give you a couple tips on those on-camera interviews. So first, why do we talk to media? We want to publicize DAV's purpose, services, activities, and achievements, right? So many people, they don't really know who we are or what we do, and it's really important to highlight these things, uh, items such as our claims work, our transportation network, and how it offers, you know, hundreds of thousands of free rides to veterans so they can get to their VA medical appointments each year. Um, events like the Winter Sports Clinic that we do alongside the VA out in Colorado every year. Uh, the the T tournament that we do out in Iowa with them as well. These kind of adaptive uh, sporting events uh, folks don't know about. And it's really important to, to highlight these things and show the difference that they make in the recovery for a lot of our nation's disabled veterans. We also want to establish DAV as a leader and trusted source on veteran-related issues, right? So DAV has been around for 100 years. That is a lot, a lot of institutional knowledge, not just uh, about disabled veterans, but veterans in general. We know the VA system in and out, and we know the issues that affect veterans from uh, women veterans, homelessness, uh, you know, burn pits, Agent Orange, all the, you know, there, there's nothing that DAV doesn't know about, hasn't done a study on, and it's important to highlight that to our local media. And third, we also want to generate awareness among disabled veterans so that they can actively campaign both individually and collectively for their own betterment, right? So uh, DAV, we got more than a million members, but there's far more than that many veterans out there who, again, may not know about us. So if they see us on uh, local media talking about, um, you know, uh, something that we've done to help uh, veterans in their community. It can pique their interest. It can get them involved. And uh, it's kind of one of those things where, where the more voices, the more power. So what makes a good story? What's going to make a reporter want to come out to your local chapter and, and spend a day uh, getting your story and getting it out to the local community? Well, anything that's original, novel, or unique to your local chapter and the services that we provide uh, to our local communities, right? Whether it's doing some sort of fundraising activity to uh, send a veteran to the Winter Sports Clinic or to the T tournament, or something such as, uh, you know, volunteering. Say we got a uh, someone, a veteran in your local chapter who uh, has just donated their 10,000th hour to helping veterans at their local VA medical center. That's something that's pretty unique and definitely deserves to be highlighted. Another reason, some personal achievement. Okay, talking again about the transportation network. Let's, let's say we have a driver who just hit 100,000 miles volunteering his or her own time to get their fellow brothers and sisters to their VA medical appointments. That is definitely an achievement to do that 100,000 miles, right? Even 10,000, whatever the milestone is, it's something that you you should try and highlight to your local reporters. Anniversaries, landmarks, dates, those are all reasons to reach out as well. Uh, something like uh, D-Day, right, uh, June 6th. You might even have a veteran in your local chapter who, who was there that day, right? So let's reach out to um, media and try and get their story. Same with Pearl Harbor. Veterans Day, um, a commemoration that a chapter is doing on 9-11, Flag Day, any of those things that you guys are doing at your local chapters, reach out to your local media about it and get them there. And uh, last thing I want to talk to you about is a couple tips for interviews. Number one, uh, make sure you're wearing some sort of DAV gear, right? It's good to get uh, that logo and that brand awareness out there and show that when you're talking, you're representing DAV, right? But you also have to make sure that when you're doing that, you're staying within DAV's resolutions and staying nonpartisan, right? We're not Republicans. We're not Democrats. We are a nonprofit organization dedicated to the betterment of the lives of our nation's disabled veterans. And that's all that matters, right? Um, 
also talking to reporters, let's get some ground rules first, right? We want to make sure that they're not going to uh, put out any gotcha or t trick questions, right? We're there to talk about the volunteer network and the volunteer network only that, you know, nothing else really matters. And if you're talking to a reporter, um, make sure you, you ask them, hey, you know, if I mess up right here, is it all right if we start this over? And there's really no reporter out there that's going to say no to that. They want you to look good. You want you to look good. If you get going, you don't like what you're saying, say, hey, let's stop and start that over. I guarantee you they're going to work with you. But just make sure that you handle that before the interview gets going. And last, use some quotable language, right? Very often we like to do a really long explanation of what we're talking about, but you'll find out that journalists very often, they're going to use a five to 10 second soundbite of, of what you're trying to explain. So try and keep it concise and as succinct as possible when you are given some quotes. Um, but one of the best ways to reach out to your local media is actually through our social networking, which is something Mary is going to handle with you right now. Absolutely. And as Todd said about social media, uh, not only can it help you reach journalists in your community, but leaders, prospective members, supporters. It's important for every chapter and department to have that social media presence. Why? Like I said, you're able to reach out to people in your community. Maybe it's that veteran or that family member that's looking for something and they don't know what it is, but DAV has it or it's uh, a, a mayor or a city councilman that does, doesn't know, isn't aware of some issues that the veterans are having. Uh, the local media, well, like, as Todd said, highlighting volunteers for the work that they do or your chapter for its fundraising efforts to, to send disabled veterans to adapt the sports events or conventions or, or meetings, or maybe it's, it, it's even as, as serious as, as suicide prevention and awareness, having that connection with the veterans in your community is uh, invaluable. You, there, you can't put a price on that. And the other positive about social media is it's free. It's free. It, it costs no money for your chapter, for your department um, to, to be a part of it. So you can really take advantage of that popular widespread uh, outlet to get the message across and to let people know who we are. So how does it help you share your message? Well, one way is you can you can tag people. By tagging people, um, you, you're reaching out to that journalist that Todd mentioned. You're also, um, you're getting their audience involved as well. Uh, you can find out how to, how to do that. Really, you just, you, you Google search for them on their social media. You find out what it is, and then and you make sure that they're tagged whenever you make a post. Um, it, it allows you to reach more of an audience, uh, which ideally ends up with more involvement and support from the people in your community. So another thing to remember though, is to stay on top of your messages. It's highly discouraged that you open up the social media channel and then ignore it. Uh, you really need to have somebody dedicated, if not a couple of people dedicated to those pages, whether it's Twitter, or Instagram, um, your Facebook page, to stay on top of that audience engagement because that's how you're gonna keep it going. When people comment or have a recommendation or a complaint, they want to hear back from you. So make sure that you, you respond to that within a reasonable amount of time. If you don't have the answer to what they're saying or what, what they're commenting about, simply say, I've heard you and now I will find the answer. But give them some sort of a response. Put yourself in their position. When you reach out to somebody, you would like a response as well. So remember that whenever you have these pages open. Don't just forget a don't just set them up and forget about them. Another thing to remember is the rules of the organization. You know, Todd mentioned it with outreach and it's the same way on social media. And we all know that it can be a hostile, hostile conversation involving religion, politics, you know, all of these things. If you are a chapter or department, social media page, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, you are nonpartisan and you are noncombative. You are not argumentative and you don't get into politics. OK, so be careful on the subject matter, on the content that you decide to post. Um, don't post anything that is for one candidate or another uh, or anything that's going to that's going to cause uh, some controversy and, and some some opinionated uh, conflict on your page. We don't want that. Your page is a representative of the AV. So make sure that it, whether it's at the local level or the presidential elections that are right around the corner, 
uh, just keep your page clean. When in doubt, leave it out, okay? But don't get mad at your audience. If, if, if you do have an audience member comment or be hateful or try to lead you down a partisan path, um, you can hide them. You can block them. Um, there are steps you can take, but don't engage. That's the biggest point. Don't engage with that negativity and that controversy. Um, other than that, you know, it, you can keep it fun too. highlight one of your members, highlight their service, tell their story. Uh, these are all ways to to get your community involved, get potential members involved, uh, family members, transitioning service members, and ultimately as well, uh, the media, the local media. If they see you have an active page and an active chapter, they're more likely to, to respond when you reach out to them. If you need any additional guidance or, or you want to find out more about some of these things that we've talked about today, you can go online to our website, gav.org, and find our publicity guide. Our publicity guide covers tips and tricks, do's and don'ts, um, and it has a lot of resources there covering media outreach, community outreach, and social networking. And if you have any other questions, don't don't be afraid to reach out. We're here to help, as always. Uh, you can see right there, that is my contact information, Todd Hunter. I'm the Assistant National Communications Director, thunter at dab.org. And here's Mary. Mary, you can reach her also. She is also an Assistant National Communications Director, mdever, D-E-V-E-R, at dav.org. And we got one more member of our team, always willing to help on any social media guidance or advice. Jeremy Sharp is our social media manager. You can reach him at jsharp at dav.org. We want to thank you guys for taking the time out today to watch this. We wish you the best of luck. We want to see those stories out there, whether they're on the local news or on your social media channels. We wish you the best of luck. Hope 2020 starts treating everyone a little bit better. Um, and and But let's all do have a, a good time celebrating this 100th year of existence for such a wonderful organization. Appreciate you guys. Thanks so much.